Hi, I'm Kirsten McLaughlin, Public Affairs Manager for Cox Communications. Welcome to Community Connection. Today we have Michael Andrade, Cox Business Engineering Manager. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I know you've been on this show before talking generally about internet safety and keeping families and individuals safe online. Today we're going to dive a little bit more into how we keep our children safe online. Mm -hmm. So tell me, um, what are some of the issues our kids face when they go online today? Well, Kirsten, I'm, I'm really glad that you asked that. That's something that is near and dear to my heart. I work with a lot of youth groups, and I see that there are so many different technologies available for kids to, frankly, get themselves into a little bit of trouble with today. And the challenge is there are so many different ways that parents a lot of times aren't aware of, of all of the different threat vectors that are out there. Um, we've all heard about cyberbullying and cyber terrorism and these kinds of things, but I think one of the things that we lose sight of is the fact that there are so many different ways now to connect out to the internet and to, uh, or various portals to get out to the internet. It's not just the old fashioned desktop or laptop computer. You've got cell phones, you've got gaming consoles, you've got MP3 players that have internet access. All of these different devices nowadays can be used to get out to the internet. And because of that, there's a level of anonymity that's also involved. And the challenge that's associated with that is that kids can sometimes get themselves into trouble, not necessarily even wittingly. Uh, something that starts out as just a simple little joke can get blown out of proportion, can get retweeted, can get forwarded. And where somebody thought it was just a little joke between two people, the receiving party forwards that off the next thing you know it's blasted all throughout the campus, it's gone viral, and you've got a lot of hurt feelings and sometimes even worse. Um, <clears throat> with cyberbullying, that's really one of the bigger concerns today because it is so prevalent. And again, it's not necessarily bad kids that are doing it. I think it is because of that level of anonymity that uh, a number of different way, things can happen. Uh, there's flaming, there's, uh, which is basically just an online fight one kid will send a text to another kid and they get into a war of words, if you will. Um, there's harassment, which of course is, is just what it sounds like, uh, nasty, insulting, mean messages to each other. Uh, there's denigration. Uh, kids like to call it dissing each other, um, sending or posting gossip and uh, rumors that cause damage. Sometimes, you know, a lot of times not even true. Uh, impersonation, another thing, you know, boy might uh, act like he's another boy to get a girl's affection or a girl will say she's someone else to get information out of somebody that wouldn't be shared freely. Um, outing is another one. Uh, kids will find a secret out about another kid and tweet that out to the entire campus. Uh, there's exclusion, which is another very hurtful one. Um, not being included uh, and purposefully excluding uh, someone can really hurt feelings. And then, of course, uh, which can be very dangerous, is the cyber stalking. And uh, that's just a repeated and intense harassment and denigration uh, threats that cause fear. And all of these different, different uh, avenues can really cause a lot of harm, can hurt kids. And sometimes, because they're so embarrassed, they don't necessarily bring it up to their parents, to the adults, to their teachers. So they end up trying to bottle all these feelings up, and that can be really scary and uh, uh, very detrimental to their emotional health. Um, so those are, those are just some of the, the different avenues and different aspects uh, uh, of threats that are, are out there. So you bring up a great point about how um, damaging it can be to kids' emotional health at all ages. We, you know, obviously in the news there's a lot of discussion around high schoolers and middle schoolers, but we're seeing some of these things play out much at much younger ages. So what can kids do to protect themselves online? Absolutely. And one of the things, I, I was reading a, a statistic recently that they were saying uh, it was three in five children have been affected in some way by cyberbullying. Wow. And ironically, to your point, it is getting younger and younger and younger. Kids, younger kids are having more and more access to these things. 
So some of the different things that they can do to, to help protect themselves, uh, first and foremost, obviously, is to educate themselves, to understand the technology that they're using, to realize that your Apple iTouch that has Wi-Fi access is a portal to the outside world. Now you have where a parent wouldn't uh, let their six-year-old child run free on the playground all by themselves, they'll let them roam free on the, the wild internet with this device that connects them to child predators, to uh, mean children, to any uh, number of things that are out there. Um, so education is a big, big thing. Uh, protecting passwords, making sure that only you have access to your YouTube, uh, your Facebook accounts, and, and those kinds of things. Um, keeping your photos and texts PG. It sounds so silly and, and common sense, but it never ceases to amaze me. We see it in the media all the time. People take pictures, they send them out, uh, expecting it to go to a select few, and the next thing you know, everybody sees it. And the interesting thing about the internet is a lot of times once this information is out there, you can never, ever, ever get it back. So it's better to be proactive and safe up front than it is to try and, and recover after the fact. Um, pause before you post. You know, that, that's probably one of the, the most important things is just think about what you're about to say. Be empathetic. Is this something that you would want said about you? Is this something that you'd be proud that your mom, your dad, your grandparent reads? Uh, because the likelihood is they could. And uh, raise awareness. Have an understanding of what cyberbullying is, what uh, cyber terrorism is, understanding how it does affect people, and also standing up. It's not just protecting yourself, but protect your friends, protect your peers. One of the biggest problems is that kids see it going on and they do nothing because they're afraid of being a victim and a target themselves. So when you see this happening, have that strength, have that courage to stand up and say, that's just not right, and protect your friends. And the more that kids do that, the more they realize that they can make a difference, the more they can help. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, obviously, don't be a cyber bully yourself. Right, right. So how can parents help support their kids in all of these things that you just laid out? And what can parents do to help protect their kids online? Sure. So much the same way, uh, education is key, staying involved, checking in with their kids, understanding what uh, types of communi uh, communities that the children are involved in, are they out on YouTube, checking in with what they're posting on YouTube, making sure uh, the old uh, philosophy of trust but verify, trust that your kids are good, but check and see what are they saying about other kids, what are kids saying about them. Keep an eye out for secretive behavior. And then also there's a lot of great software programs that are out there available today that can help uh, parents be a little bit more proactive and take some of that burden off in the technology that they may not understand. That's great. And I know from Cox's perspective, we're doing a lot to mm -hmm. help enable families and parents and students to keep themselves safe online. Right. Um, from a public affairs perspective, we do a lot of work with our local schools and our boys and girls clubs and other nonprofits and getting the word out and getting resources out into the community to help protect folks against cyber bullying and other um, cyber threats right. um, online. Um, we also have our Take Charge website. What mm -hmm. can you tell me about that? Well, that's, that's one of the things that uh, I've always been very proud to work with Cox because Cox does take a, a, a very forward-looking uh, role in uh, the protection of our customers, our, our children, our parents, uh, our youth. Um, and the Take Charge is a great website. We have some amazing tools and resources available. There's documentation that uh, will help parents understand the technologies a little bit better. But we also provide some tools, uh, such as the McAfee suite of programs. So McAfee provides a family protection package as well as antivirus, and we provide that at no charge through the Take Charge website to all Cox customers because we feel it is that important. That's great. Anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap up today? Um, just two other websites that I, I would like to point out. There's uh, Common Sense Media, which is another great resource for parents who might not understand the technology or feel that they're uh, comfortable or confident to have the discussion. There's a lot of really great YouTube uh, uh, clips on that site. And then there's also StopBullying.gov, which is a government-provided website that, again, has a lot of great resources, tools, 
uh, that parents can help use to get a better understanding of the threats that are out there that uh, face their children. And that's a key point too, that um, part of combating all of these threats and improving our cyber safety online mm -hmm. is understanding what's out there exactly. and being willing to talk, you know, parents talking to children um, about what's going on. Exactly. So. And it's no, diff no, no easier today than it was when we were kids. <laughs> so the challenge really is just sitting down and, and having the, the courage to, to have those conversations. So, in closing, any final tips for our students or our parents? Well, I, I would just say uh, education is key, being aware and being knowledgeable of the different ways that your kids are getting out onto the internet. Uh, most, statistically speaking, most time spent on the internet is actually done at home, even when it's cell phones or uh, smart devices. So be aware, stay an active part in your children's lives, understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, and how they're doing it, and uh, most of all, just be safe and have fun. And uh, that's the, that would be my, my best advice. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's been fascinating talking about these issues with you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you, our viewers. Until next time, we'll see you on Community Connection.